Hey everybody, it's Stacy here. Um, I am getting ready to do this um, next video. Um, this one is the soldering video. We finished up um, copper foiling last time. And uh, so what you wanna have together when you're getting ready to do your soldering is your solder. Now this is um, uh, 60 40. Um, that's the kind of solder you need for copper foil. If you're going to be doing leaded stained glass, you want 50-50 solder. And I'm not going to go into the details between those. It doesn't really matter. It's just the different compositions of lead and whatever in the solder, you know. Um, I've got my soldering iron right here. This is a Weller. Um, Weller's uh, one of the best ones you can get. Um, they run about 60 something dollars, which is not you know, totally unreasonable. Um, I have um, this thing right here that is like, I guess, I don't know, aluminum in there. And um, it is for cleaning. Um, I use that, um, you know, like once or twice every time I'm using my soldering iron. But what you do in between while you're soldering is you take a regular sponge, wet it, and you're gonna wipe your soldering iron on that during the time that you're soldering. And I'll show you that. Colton's here to help. Yes. Say hi. Yes. You wanna do some soldering in a minute? I'll show you how. Um, now, it's the so first thing, thing, well, it can be. You have to be careful. My soldering iron's been heating for about 15 minutes. You don't have to leave it that long. Most of them will heat up in five. Um, people have asked me, does it matter if I have an expensive soldering iron or if I can get a cheap one? Well, it does matter. Um, the cheap ones tend to not get hot enough and they tend to not hold a consistent temperature and that can cause you some real problems, especially the second thing, the not, not being consistent. Um, you want this solder to melt evenly in your lines. And if it isn't a consistent temperature, if it cycles, which is what they tend to do, between hot enough and not hot enough, then you'll be going along and it'll be going real smooth and then all of a sudden it'll start junking up on you and being hard to hard to heat and, it, and it'll cause you problems. Now, the other thing you need is some flux. Let me get the bottle and I'll show you. Um, flux is a, is a chemical that you put on um, before you solder and it helps the solder to adhere to the pool. Um, this is the bottle of Flux that I use. It comes from Hobby Lobby. And uh, I just get a little, I have a little glass bottle here and I just put some in that and then I can save it. And I put the lid on and save it. Um, what you wanna do is get your pattern down. I have all my pieces all foiled and burnished. We did that last time. And if you aren't up to where we are, go back and look at those other videos. Um, but they're all foiled and burnished and ready to go. Now I have, you'll see these little tacks around the outside. Those are just regular thumb tacks. I'll take my special little hammer here. You can have any hammer. And um, I just put around the edges just to kind of keep it lined up. You don't necessarily have to do that. I don't always do it. I think in the beginning it's important that you do um, because it'll just kind of help you keep things lined up. So you need a brush for your flux. I just use an old paint brush. Um, they make brushes specifically for that. Uh, I don't know if it makes a difference. You just need something to get the flux on there. And um, like I said, my soldering iron is good and hot. I've got all my pieces lined up. I've got my tacks put in and um, everything is ready to go. Now, um, the first time you go over your piece with your soldering iron, you're not gonna just go straight away to soldering all these lines. The first thing we're gonna do is what's called tacking. We're gonna tack our pieces down, which we, please be careful. Okay. Which means um, we're gonna put just a little dab of solder on each one of these lines, and that's gonna hold the pieces together uh, even more for us to do our actual soldering. So you get a little bit of flux. You don't want a whole lot. I tend to get too much. It's just a habit I have, and it causes it to kind of spit and sputter and stuff like that. Now you get a little bit of solder on there and go over um, your, your foil lines right here. And we'll just do a little bit here and I'll show you. Okay, I'm gonna go over these lines and then I'm gonna tack those down. And you get your arm and I just uh, cleaned mine. Now when you get done with your arm, you need to leave a little solder on it. 
Um, instead of some, the tendency might be to want to clean it real good right before you put it up. Don't do that. It's going to still be hot after you unplug it. And while it is still hot like that, it needs something to burn. Otherwise, it'll wear it out. So when you get done, you want to put a little solder over it to let it have something on it for that purpose. Okay, I hope y'all can see good. I lowered you as low as I can get you. So take your solder. Here's the solder right here. Coming out of that is the solder. Now you take that and lay it down on where you want to put the, your little blob. And then you get your solder and iron. Put the solder down first and then your iron on top of it and make a little blob. And if you do it this way, it won't lift your pieces up. If you put the solder and iron down first and then, then put the solder on top of it, it's going to stick to your pieces and they're going to come unhinged. So put your solder down, then your iron, and it makes a blob. Solder down, iron, blob. Solder down, iron, blob. Solder down, iron, blob. Yes, you can do one. You want to do one? Okay, now we got all Check those that I I fluxed all those areas and we what about this area? we blobbed those. So we'll do this side over here next. Um, I see that moved a little bit on me. If it moves a little bit, just touch. Just put it right back. Yeah, by touching the inside and not this part. Okay, I'm over here. Colton's gonna do one. Okay, hold this in one hand. I'm actually scared to do this. I know, but you can do it. And then hold this. Now, I'm going to do it with you the first time. We're going to put our solder down right on the solder line, and we're going to put the solder and iron on top of it. It'll melt it, and then you have a blob. There you go. That's satisfying. Mm -hmm, it is satisfying. It's fun. Ooh, I love the smell of soldering in the morning. Yeah, it smells good, I think. The smell bothers some people. It doesn't bother me. Right. Okay. Now, let me um, flux some more area. Like I said, you just need a little flux, just enough to kind of go over it. You don't need like a, lot. a whole lot, for especially for this part, because we're just going to be putting a little blob down there to hold our pieces together. Okay, so there we go. Put your solder down. Melt then blob. Your blob. Put your solder down lift, and then blob. And you lift the solder up before you lift your iron up. And then it won't pull the piece up with you. Solder, iron, solder, iron. Solder, iron, Is it okay iron. if some of it gets on glass? It is okay if it gets on the glass. Good question. It will scrape right off. Um, oh, wow. Okay, now we're gonna do this side over here. Would you like to do it again? Yes, but still hold. It doesn't matter if you get the flux on the glass or if you get the flux. Um, we're going to clean that later. Now we're going to pull a little bit more out of here. Be careful because that end will get hot. Yeah, don't touch okay, it. Okay, hold this in this hand and, and this in this hand. hand. Okay, we put the solder down first and then our iron. Do you see how I'm using my iron? I'm putting it down kind of at an angle. Yeah. Kind of like this. Yeah. Uh, like that. Kind of at an angle. All right. Solder, iron, solder, iron. Solder, iron, solder, iron. Another thing is you don't want to leave your solder and iron next to your glass for too long. Just long enough to melt the solder. If you leave it connected to the glass for too long, it will break it. The glass? Yes. It will break your glass. I've had it happen. Um, it takes a good while for that to happen, but it will happen. Um, okay? Now, we've da uh, tacked down everything except this center. Uh-oh. This might be a dumb question, but what happens if this part of the siren part touches, like, the, the metal stuff? If the hot part touches the metal, the foil? Probably nothing would happen. Well... That is a good question because that's what actually adheres everything is, okay, the the flux goes on to help the solder adhere to the copper foil because the solder adheres to the foil, not to the glass. I don't know if that's obvious to you or not, but the glass itself does not hold solder. 
It's that's why we fool it. So much knowledge. Yes. I don't want it. I'm gonna when I use little things like this, I take them out and brush them with flux yeah, individually what... and brush this inside part. To me um, it actually looks a little hard. Just to be sure that I get um a good um a good coating of flux on there. Now it's not gonna fit exactly. I have to kind of work around on it. Okay. It it's not fitting exactly in the hole. Um which is weird because it was fitting in the hole just a minute ago. But hold on, we'll we'll get it fixed. Boy, sometimes it fits in the hole. It's okay, it's just gonna sit right like that. Yeah. As long as it, it, hold on, there, as long as you're going to have, um, it's okay if it doesn't fit all the way in the hole, as long as I have enough edges that I can connect to the foil, and I do, um, it's a little tricky, but it's going to be okay. Um, that's a tighter fit than I usually have with those pieces. A lot of times, um, a lot of times I will um, have more room around there. But the way this one was cut, it just worked out that way. So it's kind of hard to. Um, you have to kind of turn your iron to the side to get some places and let it kind of drip down. Um, that works. That's fine. All right, we'll get this one. This one right here. Right there. Right there. And right there. Now I'm going to wash my solder iron. Now to do that, you can just get your sponge and just wipe it like this. Now be careful because it kind of, it can kind of pop, and uh, little pieces, you know, fly out, and you don't want to get burned. So be careful. Um, I'm going to start, you can start anywhere you want. I'm going to flux this here and these areas here. And then I can solder that much without it drying. It depends on how fast you go, how much you want to flux at a time. Now, I'm going to put my, <clears throat> what you want to do when you're soldering is be sure that your iron has contact with the foil. Okay, so don't put your solder underneath your iron. Put your solder and your iron kind of together like this, and then I'm going to run it along. See, I'll melt it. I'll get it started like this, and I'm going to move it along in a smooth motion. Solder first, and then the iron. And I want to be sure that my iron is contacting. In other words, I can feel the pressure of the iron connecting with the foil. Okay? Now... See that I put the solder right in front and then the iron. And I want to fill that up just a little bit. What you want is for this nice bead, they call it, to form. That nice, this kind of shape, you know, kind of a, a hump, you know. Um, sometimes if your pieces are, have a little space between them, it'll get kind of spread out. And, and that's okay. It's not as nice, but, you know, it's okay. I'll see that kind of, I'm going to straighten that out. And this right here, there's kind of a little space there. So it's not as beady as I might like it to be, but it's okay. But I want to kind of get it straight and smooth. Okay, if you have lumps, um, just kind of smooth over them with your soldering iron. Now and then pull you some more out. And we'll do this here. I'm going to do this side first, solder, and then the iron. Now, if your iron is a cheap one and it's not a consistent temperature, it's not going to make a fluid motion like that. Okay? So, it's important that you get a good iron. Speaking of iron, if there's a Hobby Lobby near where you live, Go to it if you want to do this. Well, the Hobby Lobby, um, I don't know what about their irons. I don't know if they have good enough irons or not. I ordered mine off Amazon. 
Yeah, I meant to say And that. Or you can order off the Weller um, or any of their websites, of course. Now here we're going to flux these areas over here. And I'm not going to solder the whole piece. That'll take a long time. Well, it won't take a real long time, but I'm just going to do a little bit. Now, you can come back this way um, in the other direction if you want, like like that. See how I've got the solder connected to the side? Just as long as your solder, your iron is having contact with the copper foil, and you're feeding enough solder into it that it's able to make that, you know, that shape you want, that, the bead, okay? Um, sometimes your iron, you know, you may like get to a place where it doesn't seem like it's hot and you may have too much solder on that place. So either wipe it or just move to a different area of your iron, okay? But you wanna wipe it with the sponge every couple of minutes. Um, it just um, makes it more uh, fluid and makes it makes it smoother if you get a bunch of solder caked up on there um it is um it's it, it interferes with the smoothness of your strokes now also they may look wider if your foiling isn't all that great you know if you have an overlap of foil um it can make your um solder lines look wider and that's just a work in progress thing and see right there my foil i'm gonna have to do something about that um let me see if i can make it stretch across what happened was when i was transferring i got it fixed well i had it fixed i get it i had to put some more solder there what happened was when i was transferring my pieces apparently my solder got bunched up i meant my foil got bunched up so it's almost like there's no foil right there and that's what happens. It, it'll mess up your um, your lines. But, you know, these things happen. I did this really quickly trying to get this other, I want to get this video done. Now, see, I'm, I'm feeding it in from the side, my solder. And that's okay, too. Any way you get the solder to it, as far as I'm concerned, is fine. As long as your iron is making contact with the foil, because that's what you want melted, is the iron melting the solder uh, to the foil. So, um, I'm going to do that center part, since some of you might think that looks sort of challenging or something. I don't know. It's um, I'll just do that real quick. Um, and then, uh, see there's a blob there I can use to kind of see how I went around a little bit, the piece, the the insert with that. And then I'm gonna go around here. A bug on me, get off the bug, sorry y'all. I never wrote to me, there was a bug lit on me. And then I'll go put my solder kind of above, however you can get to it, you know, on something like that. You, you just have to kind of um, like to get squished in there you know, you have to put your solder kind of on top and let it drip down. And let's see, my foiling is not all that great right there. It made that kind of thicker because I, I kind of, my foil kind of overlapped it in that in that place. And you don't want these little holes. See that little hole occurred there? Um, usually that happens because your foil has a little gap. Um, you can fill them with, with solder, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Oh, it's kind of hard to get to there, but I did it. And then I'm gonna get this little area here. I'll get my, now see there's still some gold there from the um, foil. And I wanna tin that. Tinning is where you put a little solder on something, either to change the color or just to cover it with solder, they call that tinning. Now, um, we got this last little line right here to go. And I don't know if I flux this or not, so you might see what happens if you didn't if you don't flux something. If you don't flux it, your your solder is not going to stick, and it'll um, it'll be really annoying because it'll just like. Well, I'll show you. This is what happens if you if you start going along and this starts happening to you 
it's because you forgot to flux. Well, that looks pretty good actually, but <laughs> usually what happens is it just kind of spatters out like that. Okay, that's what happens if you don't remember to flux. I'm gonna do this last little part and then I'm just gonna talk for a minute. Um, I'm gonna melt that big blob because I don't need any more solder than that. I got a big blob right there. And we won't need much right here because we've already gotten quite a bit. We just need to melt it. Um, when you get done soldering all your pieces together, um, you're gonna do the front and the back. And when you get done doing that, you wanna do, well, or in the middle of doing that, however you wanna do it, um, you want to go around your edges also. Um, see, I'm just smoothing out some rough spots. If you get little rough spots in there, that happens. It's okay. Just smooth them out. You want to go around these edges, too, where there's um, just full. Um, because uh, when you're putting your frame on, if for some reason... Your frame isn't fitting exactly right or something. Those edges might be exposed a little bit. And you don't want them to be gold. You want them to be silver, like your frame. So that shouldn't happen, but it's a good idea, excuse me, just to go ahead and, you know, put some solder on them anyway. So you're going to do all of the front, turn it over and do all of the back. Sometimes um, it'll leak through and you'll have kind of blobs on the other side. So you want to go ahead and you know, get those out of the way or whatever, melt them. Um, so you do, um, it's time to clean anyway. Do your front, do your back, and then uh, you're done. Um, I'm not sure what else to tell you about soldering. It does not hurt, see this? If you get solder on your glass, it'll just scrape right up or you can use your iron and heat it off, however you wanna do that. Um, Let's see, clean your iron periodically while, with your wet sponge um, while you're going along. Try to keep your make your seams to look like this where they're kind of raised, like a bump. That's the bead. We rather them be a bump or a bead like these than flat. Um, and if they're flat, sometimes that happens because uh, you're over foiled. Where the foil meets, it's too wide and they won't, and it won't plump up. Sometimes it happens because you haven't used enough solder. Um, there's all kinds of things that can cause that. I don't know. Um, if you have questions about soldering, this is when it really helps to be able to talk to somebody. A lot of times it's during the soldering process because that's a lot of times where people have, you know, specific questions. Hey, you know, this is happening. You know, uh, what, what am I doing wrong? Whatever. Uh, that's when it's helpful, you know, to be able to, to talk to somebody. Um, so feel free to email me and um, I'll give you my phone number and we can talk. You know, like I've said on all the other videos, I'm totally available to help you any way I can. Um, people were nice enough to do that for me when I was teaching myself. So, you know, I am totally willing to pass that on. Um, I really don't know what else to tell you other than that. Um, if you have specific comments or questions, please ask me. Um, but um, this is pretty much the way you do it. Now with uh, a lead piece, um, it's different in a couple of ways. Uh, number one, you use different solder, the 50-50. And on a lead piece, you only solder the ends, the junctions, where the lead pieces come together. You don't solder all along. If that was, if that was lead right there, you would not solder all along it. You would just solder where there, where it meets another piece, where there's a junction. So in essence, it's kind of like just tacking, you know, all as you go, you know, all through. But sometime I'll do a lead video and, and go through that, um, because it is somewhat different. I do mostly copper foil, um, but, um, I can do a lead video as well. Anyway, that's about all I know to say uh, about this. If you have specific questions, be sure and ask. Um, the next time um, we will talk about, after you get done with this, you wanna clean it. Spray it just with some water and a rag because you wanna get that flux off. They make flux cleaner. I don't use it. I just use water and um, a rag and wipe it down because it can corrode your, um, your solder if you leave that flux on there. So you want to clean your flux off when you get done. 
and uh, for sure don't leave a piece with flux on it for a period of time. Like if I wasn't going to finish working on this, I would wipe that off and then, you know, come back. So clean it, clean your flux off with, with water and a rag. And uh, then the next time we'll do framing and hooks, you know, and figure out how to do that. And so anyway, thanks for joining me. I appreciate you being here. And uh, please don't forget to like and subscri subscribe. That supports my channel, and I appreciate that because I work really hard, and I'm trying to build it. So uh, if you feel like doing that, that'd be great. And by the way, this little insert thing, I get these at Hobby Lobby. Um, they're in, like, this, you know, the ornament section or whatever you call them, embellishments. And um, they go on sale sometimes, so they're really cheap. And that's the kind of things I like to use these um, for my inserts. I just cut the little ends off, and I like to make, you know, make them the focal point of my pieces, and they're really fun to work with, so just so you know. Anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. See y'all later.